on this week's episode of Boat Tech TV, Hull Speed 2.0. In this episode of Boat Tech TV, I want to pause for just a moment. Uh, last week, we pushed the boat out, as it were, with the technical jargon and explaining um, hull speed with fruit numbers and all those other wonderful technical terms. Um, from the comments, though, I left quite a few people behind. So I do apologise. I'm trying to pitch these shows and find the right balance. So I thought it was uh, a good idea just to stop for a second, revisit the, uh, the last episode and just put across in a simpler form and in something in bite-sized pieces that you can understand about hull speed. Now, now looking at the wave pattern here, you see a little pleasure craft boat going across the top there, and it's making a wonderful wave pattern. Um, we call the, the waves behind it there that are pushing outwards, uh, divergent waves, uh, as they come out and radiate out from the boat. And then also behind the boat, with, behind its transom, you can't quite see it on that one, but you can perfectly see it on the duck. You have um, transverse waves that follow in a wavy pattern behind the boat. Now these are generated from the front of the boat and as it moves through the water, it makes a disturbance and then it's propagated down behind the boat. And these are the waves that we're interested in this little presentation. So, vessel sailing on smooth seas. Um, at very, very low speed, you, will, you can almost sail without making any bow wave or any disturbance. As you start to pick up speed, uh, the water around the hull is disturbed and you get a little bow wave and you can see as it makes a bow wave behind it as it because it's higher than the surface of the water it has to drop down again and then it will rise up again until it until it damps itself out and that's really what, what's going on here and we're looking for a specific condition when this is happening so as you increase the power the uh, boat's going to go a little bit faster it's going to push through the water and then it's going to create a bigger bow wave the bigger bow wave creates a trough and it creates another crest behind it. And you can see that from the image here that the bow wave has started to increase in height and the trough has dropped and it's moving along the vessel. And this is very important because as you pick up speed, the, the bow wave um, will increase in length. The wavelength will increase in length with speed. So there's a relationship going on there. Once you get even more speed, um, the, the, you're going to get a condition where you've got a crest at the bow and this wave has moved all the way down the side of the hull and you've got a crest at the trough. And you can see there, you've got crest, trough, crest. And this condition is what is called hull speed. It's a very, very important condition because beyond this condition here, you need a lot of power to push through it. It's, 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 it's kind of a limiting factor. And in actual fact, the old sailboats back in the day um, didn't have any power to push through it. So once you start making a big bow wave, if you haven't got as much much in the sails, you've got nothing to punch through the bow wave. And be, so it became a limiting factor. And that's where the term hull speed is, is allegedly came from. Now the equation on the screen there, the V hull is actually the hull speed equation. If you Google it on Wikipedia, this is what will pop up. 1.34 times the square root of the load waterline. A very important term in naval architecture, the load waterline. Um, and if you work this out, this will give you a speed in knots, depending if, if obviously if you use um, L is in feet, and you're going to um, work out what the hull speed is. So for a typically 25, 30 foot boat, you're looking probably seven, eight, nine um, knots, and it's just it's just a, a good knowledge for your boat for when you're doing powering, and that's I'll come back to that later. Now let me just touch very quickly on the fruit number. Um, this was a chap that was around in 1870, and his method is uh, a great way of relating a, a long, slender vessel to a short, fat vessel. Travelling at the same speed, you've got some idea which is good and which is bad. And that's kind of part of him in a nutshell. There's massive uses of this, but I won't delve in it too, too deeply. Um, the equation on the left is the fruit number that we use to um, non-dimensionalise everything. The equation on the right is the whole speed that you would get from Wikipedia. Now... Most of the powerboat guys will know what their speed to length ratio is. And the speed to length ratio is, is, is if you notice here, it's the same as the fruit number, but they've dropped out the gravity term. 
And that's just done for simplicity. I mean, it, we just assume that most of the boats operate at sea level, so you don't need the gravity term. Waves are gravity related, so it's um, it, it kind of comes from that. And it's it's really is to determine if a ship's fast and it's not actual speed. So it's 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 a measure of um, how fast a ship can go. And what's also interesting there is this is some model tests I was involved with um, a, a few years ago, and you can see this is classic um, hull speed. If you look at the bow there, it's just started to make a bow wave. And you can see just on the forward shoulders, um, as you go down, we've got some marks on the side there. Um, you can see there's a little trough, and then about midships, there's a slight starting of a crest. Now looking at the uh, bottom photo there, you can see that the bow wave is significantly larger. There's a trough behind it, and you can see the crest is about midships to two thirds aft. And that's what we're wanting to get for this uh, hypothetical condition of hull speed to have that at the stern. If you remember the, the picture with the wavy pattern on, well, that's what we're looking for. And that's the um, classic determination of hull speed. So just in summary, so hull speed is a really important parameter to understand the performance of a particular hull form. Uh, today we use it, as I've mentioned, to size your engine and propeller. It gives us a really good yardstick to be able to match the engine to the propeller to the hull form. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, 2.0 version of Hull Speed. I hope it's been uh, a lot more palatable. I've tried to break it down and uh, put it across in a nice way. Um, if you do have any inquiries about propellers, I've not mentioned this before on the show, but I'm actually the US agent for Brunton's propellers. So we, we size uh, sailboat propellers, autoprop verifolds, so the folders and the uh, feathering propellers. And we're based in Virginia Beach. Uh, we've got a contact details there. We have a great website. You can get in touch on uh, info at kingproportion.com. There's the phone number there below. And the other thing I need to mention as well is it's boat show season. Um, if you're going to be around Annapolis in uh, April 20th, 22nd, it's not long away. I'm just booking my hotel at the moment. Um, come and see us. We're the only propeller manufacturer there at the show. It's a good show. It's not as big as the, uh, the autumn, as the fall show, but it's a great little show. Um, I think I'm on stand C3, but we'll... We'll mention this again, but thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.